How good is this? I've been coming to this farm every year for the last 21 years. I love it here. It's my favourite place to go, just to get away for a bit. So as a way of saying thanks, I had the idea of taking some timber from the property and then returning it to the owners as a couple of beautiful handmade boxes. I ended up with these two very different pieces of firewood. The one on the left had been slightly buried for a long time, so I hit that with the pressure washer first to remove all the dirt and some surface rot. The one on the right hand had a huge split in it, so the idea was to cut it into slabs parallel to that split to get the most yield. First job was to cut a flat section on the logs that I could reference off the bandsaw table, and I decided to use this holding jig I made a long time ago. But that didn't work out too well because I soon discovered the enormous amount of drift my bandsaw has when resawing large pieces like these. Trying to push the log straight into the blade was working against that drift, and you can see in this clip how much the blade is being pushed away from that bottom bearing. So to overcome this, I just needed to freehand the cuts, moving the log side to side to compensate for the drift. I finished off those first cuts by hand. And then ran the log over the jointer to give me a flat reference surface to use on the bandsaw. And you can see here how much I'm having to turn the log to cancel out that drift. But once the cut gets started, it was pretty easy following the line and to get a reasonably straight cut. The issue wasn't the blade because as you can see here, this isn't sped up, so it's cutting through just fine. I think the issue is simply that this is only a 14 inch one horsepower bandsaw with a 6 inch extension block and I'm probably running it at its capacity with these huge cuts. After each slab was cut from the log, I ran it over the jointer to get a flat surface again before the next cut. This meant that every board cut from the log had one flat straight face, so I could then just run them through the thicknesser to mill the rough cut face flat and parallel and bring the boards down to final thickness. Then it was just rinse and repeat for all the cuts. Again, as you can see here, a dull blade wasn't the issue because this clip isn't sped up and it's having no problem cutting through this log. And by freehanding the cuts and following the drift, I was getting very consistent parallel boards. And this was the result after all that resawing. The next stages of the process were the usual, running the boards through the thicknesser to clean up that other face and bring them down to final thickness. and then cutting them to length on the table saw. These boards have already been ripped down to final height, but I forgot to record that. Some of the boards from the second log had very angular grain lines, too much for a small box. So I ripped the boards down, cutting them at an angle to match the grain, first on the bandsaw, then jointing that edge flat and finishing them on the table saw. All the splits and cracks in these boards were filled with brown CA glue and sanded smooth. After cutting the sides to length, I then cut the mitres on each end, removing only a small amount of material with a small diameter thin curved blade. I find I get much better results with it for these types of precise cuts. Just look at the crisp edge on that mitre. Damn those pesky little offcuts. They rattle around in my dust extractor pipes. Before gluing the box together, I cut a small rebate at the bottom of each side piece for the base to sit into.
To glue the box together I used the masking tape method and also applied tape to the insides of the corners which makes cleaning up glue squeeze out very easy. This is where going the extra step to tape the inside of the box pays off. I gave the inside of the box a quick sand and then applied the finish now because it's much easier to do without the base glued in place. I made sure not to get any wax in the rebate where the base would be glued in. Speaking of the base, that was the next piece. I ripped it down close to final width and then crept up on the perfect fit with the block plane. I then cross cut it to final length. I used the handheld router to chamfer the base rather than the router table because it had a slight cup to it and clamping it in the vise kept it flat so the chamfer was consistent all the way around. Again, just because it was easier, I finished the base before gluing it in place and made sure not to get wax on the glue surfaces. Finishing the inside of the box before assembly also helped with cleaning up any glue squeeze out from the base. At this stage of the build, I was down to the last usable pieces from this log, so I had to glue up a small panel for the lid. Once it was dry, I sanded it smooth and then cut it the final size on the table saw. I used a sacrificial piece of wood for this cut to prevent any blowout on that long edge. The lid was just going to sit on top of the box, so I cut a shallow rebate around the perimeter for it to sit into the box just a little to keep it in place. I then added a chamfer to the top of the lid to finish it off. To strengthen the mitres, I used my very simple spline jig to cut grooves for splines. I 
I used a darker contrasting wood for the splines and I was really happy with how they looked once the finish was applied to the box. When the glue on the splines had dried, I trimmed them down with a flush cut saw and sanded them smooth. The last piece to make for the box was the handle which I made out of strips of the same wood I used for the splines. I glued three strips together and then shaped it with a block plane and the belt sander to get the final shape. The handle was just glued in place. Finally it was time to apply finish to the box and as Daniel would say, make it pop. I used the beeswax on the outside of the box because I wanted a little bit of colour. I haven't shown much of the second box in the video because it was made exactly the same way as this one but here are a few beauty shots of both.